This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Mm, now, although most cells divide through mitosis, a small teeny subset of cells divide to form sex cells, so sperm or egg cells, also known collectively as gametes, in a process called meiosis. Meiosis both mirrors and is completely different from mitosis at the same time. So one of the biggest differences between the two is that where mitosis provides two complete sets of DNA to each daughter cell, that is they contain 46 chromosomes, the function of meiosis is to divide the genetic material so that each gamete only gets one complete set, or 26 chromosomes each. So then when a male gamete combines with a female gamete during fertilization, two sets of 26 chromosomes are joined together and the cell has 46 chromosomes again. I know, so romantic. Human cells with two sets of chromosomes are called somatic cells and are diploid. The sex cells called gametes or germ cells are haploid. Because all cells come from other cells, it makes sense that cells are always preparing to divide or are dividing. And during mitosis, when cells divide, they are creating exact, exact, exact replicas of themselves and no cheap knockoffs neither. So in comparison to mitosis, meiosis consists of two rounds of cell division instead of just one. The first round of division called meiosis one begins with a single solitary diploid cell and ends with two haploid cells. And then in the second round of division known as meiosis two, original, it starts with these two haploid cells and concludes with four haploid cells, each of which goes on to become a gamete. So let's start at the start of meiosis. You've got your single cell and it's diploid. What happens next is prophase one. In prophase one, the chromatin condenses into chromosomes. Once this occurs, the first opportunity for genetic recombination or shuffling of the genes to produce variation promptly presents itself. So the cell is still diploid and there are two versions of each chromosome. Each chromosome consists of two identical sister chromatids joined at a centromere. Similarly to mitosis, during an event called synapsis, chromosomes line up alongside each other, forming tetrads. And each tetrad, or group of four, consists of four chromatids. And this is now where the first act of genetic recombination within meiosis takes place, in a process called crossing over. Not with John Edwards. During crossing over, non-sister chromatids from opposing chromosomes exchange genetic information. Crossing over recombines genetic information between chromosomes, leaving each with a complete set of genes, but an entirely different combination of alleles. And this is basically why you don't look exactly like your siblings, unless of course you're an identical twin. And once crossing over has happened, prophase one moves on largely as in mitosis. The nucleoli and nuclear envelope break down, centrioles migrate towards opposite poles of the cell, and the spindle begins to assemble. And then we've got metaphase one, Again, as in mitosis, pairs of homologous chromosomes line up in the center of the cell, which we call the metaphase plate. This is where the second recombination takes place. The two chromosomes of a pair are going to go to opposing sides of the dividing cell. So at the metaphase plate, each pair of homologous chromosomes lines up randomly to one side or the other, independently of the other pairs. Just as the combinations of alleles within chromosomes were shuffled during crossing over, the combinations of maternally versus paternally inherited chromosomes are shuffled now too. And then we've got anaphase one. During anaphase one, spindle fibers span the space between centrioles at either pole of the cell and the metaphase plate, connecting to the independently assorted chromosomes. The spindle contracts, segregating the pairs of homologous chromosomes, pulling one complete set to a side. Next up is telophase one. In telophase one, the spindle disassembles and nuclear envelope forms around the single set of chromosomes at either side of the dividing cell. A cleavage furrow constricts at the center of the cell, physically separating the two sides. And in most cases, the division proceeds all the way through um, cytokinesis and meiosis one ends with two haploid cells, each containing one recombined set of chromosomes. And each chromosome consists of two sister chromatids. <laughs> And finally, we've got meiosis two. This is a bit more straightforward than meiosis one. So nearly again, we start with prophase two. Chromatin condenses, nuclear envelopes disappear, centrioles migrate and spindles form. And then next up is prophase two. 
chromosomes align at the metaphase plate connected by spindles to centrioles at the poles and then we have anaphase 2 the centromeres of the chromosomes are cleaved and sister chromatids are segregated to opposing sides of the dividing cell lastly we have telophase 2 again the spindle dissolves nuclear envelopes form chromosomes uncoil and cytokinesis occurs and four haploid cells now stand where once there was but one tiny little single diploid cell after meiosis 2 is complete, the four haploid cells go on to develop into gametes, eventually to join together with other gametes during fertilization. So the diploid zygote produced from this union will possess a unique combination of genes, thanks to crossing over and independent assortment. Which is probably why you're glad you don't look like your siblings. Am I right? Bounce. Bounce, bounce, bounce. At this moment in time, I'm currently in the process of a drums. Like I'm sure a lot of you are. I just had one on Monday, it is now Wednesday, and I have another one on Friday, and I'm so glad that they're gonna be over. Um, the main way I've been like revising and learning how to learn everything is just repetition, doing um, exam questions, doing practice questions, doing past papers, and I think that is like the best way to learn anything is just to read a bit and then do lots of questions on it. And that is exactly what Brilliant allows you to do. I am so excited to be finished with this really soon because it means that I get to learn new things. I'm so excited to learn something new, finally. I've always been like a biology chemistry kind of person and now I finally have the time or will have the time to learn physics for the first time ever. And if you wanna join me on my little physics learning party, you can by going to Brilliant and learning the intro of physics with me. So there will be a video in the near future on Physics 101, Intro to Physics, just what I've learned so far. Obviously nothing hard because I won't be able to. And if you follow the link below in the doobly-doo, or whatever you want to call it, can I call it that? Is that trademarked? In the description there will be a link um, that will bring you to Brilliant's website and if you can get 20% off of annual premium subscription. Woo so if you wanna learn something new or if you just wanna check it out and see what it's all about, check it out. I'm gonna start the physics, um, introductory physics course and I will let you know how it goes in a future video. Thank you for watching.